Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another edition of Time Out with Tony Dyson. And of course, once again, this is Tony Dyson. On this week, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the tongue. We're going to talk a little bit about using your words, using your mouth. And this may uh, end up being a two to three part series. Well, starting off in Genesis, as we jump right into this thing here. Um, Genesis 1 and 3, you know, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And uh, Genesis 9, once again, it says, God said. Genesis 1 and 11, God said. 1 and 14, God said. 1 and 20, God said. 1 and 24, God said. 1 and 26, God said, and that's where he made us. And once again, Genesis 128 God said see I know you all maybe uh, wonder to yourselves well, why does he keep going back to Genesis 126 because that's when God made us like him that's when he made us in his image and in his likeness so God made us like him and he wants us to be like him so he shows in the first chapter on how to get things done he gave us a blueprint or in instructions. So if God is the almighty, powerful God that he is, and he himself had to speak things into existence. So by him turning around and making us in his image, he gave us the power to speak things into existence as well. And like I said, it's like a blueprint. He's saying if, if you want to get something done, this is how you get that thing done. See, when you have control over something, you speak to it and things happen. For instance, uh, a judge. A judge has the power to send someone to jail or to set someone free just by speaking. When you're in a courtroom and, you know, the judge comes out, the bailiff says, all rise. And everyone has to rise. So, therefore, that bailiff had just made something happen by speaking. When you get married, you have to say, each party has to say, I do. Which means, out of their own mouth, they're making a vow by speaking. When you have pets or whatnot, once you teach the pet certain words, uh, sit, roll over, play dead, you know, when we train our pets to do things, so you have control over that animal. So therefore, by speaking, things happen. In Proverbs 18 and 21, it states that life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So by life and death are in the power of the tongue, you know, have you ever gotten up one day and you got up late and you said to yourself you know I'm gonna have a bad day or I'm gonna be behind all day or this is gonna be the worst day of my life and it just seems like that you just can't get going that whole day there's always something that's going on that's holding you back that day see whether or not you realized it you have just spoke death in, into, into your day you have just spoke death into your day. So therefore, because you spoke it, nothing can happen. See, and you have the power to rebuke those things. You know, you get up in the morning, you say, I'm going to have a great day. You know, you have just spoke life into your day. You know, like our grandma used to tell us, you know, watch what you say about people. You know, don't speak that thing upon somebody. And, and whether or not we realize it is, is when we speak something bad upon somebody, that person has the same mouth, the same tongue, and the same power that we have. So while we're busy downing a person and talking about a person, that person could be do, doing the same thing to us. So by scripture and by God's word, we make things happen with words. We can bless someone with words. We can curse, not cuss, but we can curse people with words. Uh, words so we speak life or we speak death that's kind of like let me tell your child open the front door let some air in you know they open the door you know you got the like the life of air coming in or you could tell them close the door you know and keep the air out 
So because everything was created with a word, it has to respond to the same. And that's a little something that I'm going to get into next week as well. A quick example on words. A child who is barely able to talk can utter the words mama or dada. And from the child's perspective, they feel that once they utter the words mama or dada, whichever one is there is going to be that person to come to their aid. That's going to be the person to get them or pick them up. Now, when a child learns to say to say other words like juice, milk, cookie, candy, the child is now exercising, asking and receiving. So even though that cookie may be way on top of the refrigerator or on top of the shelf, where the child cannot reach, if they say the right word to the right person, that cookie does come to them. See, the child didn't climb on top of the refrigerator or on, on top of the shelf to get the cookie. The child stood on the floor and said the word cookie. And what happened? That cookie came to the child. So, so see, as a child, we depended more on our words than we do as an adult. As a child, when we spoke words, you know, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I want to go outside. You know, as we spoke those words as a child, we were exercising our power that God gave us and things happened. So as I'm saying, even though the cookie didn't physically grow legs and get up and come to the child, the child still received the cookie. They stood their ground. See, you can say the right word at the right time to the right person produces results. So people of God, what I'm telling you on this day is that we have to speak life into our situations. We have to speak depth into those situations that are, are hindering us and that are bothering us. We have to speak life back into, you know, the relationships with our children, with our parents, with our siblings, with our loved ones. You have to speak life back into that dead marriage, you know. You have to speak life into that job. Now, all jobs are not easy, but you can speak life into that job. If you go to work saying, I hate this job and I don't want to be here, yes, you're going to have one of the most miserable or to and to you undesirable jobs in the world. So people of God, exercise your right that God gave you. Speak life into things. And I will continue this on next week because there is just so much. I want to talk about Jesus and the fig tree and as every time he did something, you know, raised the dead and healed the sick, and he spoke that those things. But until that time, God bless you, and God keep you, and I really do hope that this is helping someone. Until we meet again, in the name of Jesus, amen.